All right, so we're going to move on to catheter basics now, and this is on page 112 of your skills book. So if you go to 112 in your skills book, we're going to talk about catheters. So if you remember on Monday, we learned about the normal urinary system. So here, right here on the screen, you can see that we have two kidneys. We have ureters, which are tubes that go from the kidneys down to the bladder. Our bladder holds urine. And then there's a little valve right here that when we go to the bathroom, the valve opens and that urine comes out. So we know what a normally functioning urinary system looks like. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we see a picture of a catheter. This is what a catheter looks like. When a nurse inserts the catheter, they're gonna insert this part of the catheter right here into the urethra so that it ends up inside the bladder. And that's what you can see here. Okay, we have a catheter that is inserted into the bladder. Once we get that, that catheter in place, we use water to fill up a balloon on the end of the catheter. You can't see the balloon here. Think of it like a tube in a tube. You cannot see the balloon here. It's only when it's inflated with water will it puff up like that. That sits at the bottom of the bladder and it acts kind of like a doorstop. It keeps that uh, catheter from sliding out. Otherwise, there's nothing to stop that catheter from just sliding right out. So when you have a catheter in place, this whole system still works the same way. You still have kidneys, they still filter blood, they still produce urine, the urine still goes down the ureters, drip, drip, drip into the bladder, but what that catheter does is it holds that valve open all the time and it collects the urine. So instead of that urine falling out through the urethra, it now falls out through the tube inside the urethra and then it gets collected in some sort of a bag, a drainage bag. Does everybody kind of understand how a catheter works? This is what a catheter looks like. This is an actual catheter. And you can see here, this is a tube within a tube. You can't see the actual balloon. You can see like a little, just a little excess um, material there, but it's deflated so that we can put this in the patient. We need it deflated to put it in. Once we get that catheter in place, the nurse will take water, they put it through a port right here. This is a port. And all this does is let me fill up this balloon. It doesn't put anything inside the patient. Okay, so make sure it's on there. So I'm going to inject water here. You can see that little balloon fill up. And now that balloon is inside the bladder. So this is the bladder. It sits at the base of the bladder to keep it from coming out. See how I can kind of pull on that, but this isn't going to let it come out. See how that works? Okay, so this is a catheter. When we go to take a catheter out, we're all done with it. Don't need it anymore. We need to take it out. We're going to use that same port. We're going to use a syringe. The nurse is going to do this. They put the syringe on the port and they pull out the water from that balloon. And when they pull out all of that water, it becomes small again, and then we can simply pull it right out. So there's, the balloon is not inflated when it goes in. The balloon is not inflated when it comes out. That balloon is only inflated once it's in place to keep it in place. And then we deflate it to remove the catheter. Now CNAs can be trained to remove catheters. It is a delegatable skill in most states, so you can be trained to do that, but it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that you would be trained. Most settings will still have, have the nurses uh, remove catheters rather than CNAs, but it is something you can be trained to do. But this catheter by itself isn't going to help anybody. So we have this part in the body, right? We have this tubing and then we have a big hole here. So all that's going to do is let the urine from the bladder come out onto everything. That's not going to help. So what we're going to do is connect this to a drainage system of some sort. So you can see here, 
that this hole, that's the catheter, it's where it ends. This port for the drainage bag is going to go inside that catheter and now we have a closed system. This, this side is inside the patient. The urine comes through the catheter, through the tubing, and into the bag. It is a closed system. Nothing can get in here. There's no way for anything, because it's not open to the air, it's not open to anything. This end is in the patient, and this end is closed. So it is a closed system. As long as we don't let any bacteria into the system, it's fine. The problem is that if we let one bacteria into this bag, this bag has urine in it, right? It's warm, it's moist, it's got proteins and enzymes, all kinds of things that bacteria need to make more of themselves. So if one bacteria gets into this bag, it's going to multiply and that they're going to multiply and then they're going to multiply. And before you know it, you've got 100,000 bacteria in this bag and now it's starting to get a little crowded. So they start to climb and they get into this tubing. Well, when they get into this tubing, now they're getting fresh urine right? Fresh food. So they multiply faster and they climb and they climb and they climb. And then they get into this catheter. So they get on the inside of this catheter and now we've blocked out light. So now we've got warm, dark, moist, fresh food and they really start to multiply. So by the time they get out of these holes in your bladder, it's not just one or two bacteria. It's a couple of trillion bacteria that all invade at one time. So it would be like all of Canada invading your little town that quick. All of that bacteria is now in the bladder and there's not much we can do because our body didn't have a chance to identify the problem while it was still a small problem that problem was allowed to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and we never even knew it was it was happening until all of that bacteria is now in our bladder and it's an overwhelming infection and they're super hard to clear up these are called catheter acquired urinary tract infections we call them cauties c-a-u-t-i's and they're very dangerous so as CNAs, our main goal in life when we're working with catheters is to not let any bacteria into this system because there's nothing inside the catheter or the bag that will prevent bacteria from growing. So our whole goal here is to not allow any um, infiltration of bacteria into this closed system. Now the reason that there are two pieces Okay, so remember we have the catheter and we have the bag. They're two separate pieces. The nurse will put them together when she puts the catheter in. So when the nurse inserts the catheter, it'll already be attached to a bag. But the reason that we have them in two pieces is because catheters can stay in up to a month, 30 days. Bags, drainage bags, have to be changed about once a week. So they need, because this can stay in 30 days, but this has to be changed every week, they have to be two separate pieces. CNAs can be trained to change out the bag. It is a delegatable task, but you have to be trained to do it. It is not a tested CNA skill because it's not a normal CNA function. That would require additional training and it would have to be uh, determined by your workplace whether that's appropriate for you to do. All right, so there's other types of bags too. Now this is what we call a bedside drainage bag. So this is a, a big heavy suitcase of urine. If the patient is in a hospital setting, these work very well because they hold a lot of urine. We only empty them once a shift. Um, they work well in a, in a clinical setting. But if this patient has a long-term catheter, and there's a lot of people out there that have to have a catheter all the time, um, and you would never know it, but if this patient needs to go to a local grocery store or a local big box retailer, they've got to go to their doctor's office or their pharmacy, they don't want to walk around with a big suitcase full of urine with them. That's embarrassing. And it, it's not overly hygienic. And it, it just has a lot, you know, people are going to stare, right? 
if you see somebody walking around with a suitcase of urine, you're going to stare. So it makes people very uncomfortable. So in those situations, we use something a little more discreet called a leg bag. And you'll see this if you open up your skills books to page 113. You'll see a, a picture there on page 113 of what a... Um, bedside drainage bag would look like. But if you turn to 116 is actually where I need you to be. 116, this picture right here, this is what a leg bag looks like. It's smaller, it's more discreet, and it can be worn under clothing. So this would be something that would Velcro or use elastic bands against the inside of the thigh or the calf. And it's, it's a bag, it just collects the urine. And then the patient can actually go to a regular bathroom and empty the bag into the toilet, just like you would empty your bladder into the toilet. It's just kind of a halfway point, right? It's something that holds the urine until the patient goes to the bathroom. So you can have um, different types of bags based on what the patient needs. There's also different types of catheters. So on that same page, on page 116, what we've talked about so far are Foley catheters or what's called indwelling urinary catheters. We put the catheter in, we inflate the balloon, and that keeps it there indefinitely as long as we need it or up to 30 days and then it would have to be changed out. This is called an indwelling or Foley catheter. But sometimes we don't need it to stay in, we just need to put it in to get a sample or we just need to put it in to empty the bladder and um, then we're gonna withdraw it. That is called a straight calf. A straight calf does not have a balloon on the end of it because it's not gonna stay. It is a smaller catheter, it's put in, just for the purposes of getting a urine sample or uh, reducing the bladder volume, and then it's removed. That is a straight calf. But we also, for some patients, male patients, we also have a different type of catheter called an external calf. You'll also hear it called a Texas calf or a condom calf. And this, like the name says, it, it resembles a condom with a little um, port on the end of it. So this would go along the shaft of the penis. It's going to um, form a tight seal. And any urine that comes out will be collected. It's going to attach to some sort of a bag system. So this port would attach to the port on the end of the condom calf, and that will collect urine. Now, condom casts or Texas catheters are used in a variety of settings. Remember that we don't necessarily want anything inside the body because that just hides bacteria. It doesn't allow our natural defenses to locate bacteria and get rid of them before they get into the bladder. So an external catheter can be a good solution to help reduce the um, potential for urinary tract infections while still having the convenience of um, a collection device for urine. So you would go by your care plan as to what type of um, apparatus we're using for that patient. Remember, always, always, always go by our care plans. And... Um, but remember that indwelling catheters have a lot more risks to them, okay? So this is actually a tested skill, catheter care, just plain catheter care. This is a mannequin skill. So we're going to have a catheter that's in a mannequin and we are going to have to keep it clean. So catheter care, remember I said that catheters, the biggest risk are catheter acquired urinary tract infections or cauties. That's the biggest risk with catheters. So our whole goal is to keep the catheter clean and not let any bacteria inside the catheter. So to keep it clean, you're gonna do catheter care once a shift. Catheter care involves cleaning the catheter, the external part of the catheter from where it enters the body away. So we're gonna clean the catheter, and then we're gonna clean the, the skin around the catheter. So for the purposes of the test, this is gonna be done on a female mannequin. Um, so we're gonna do peri care just like we did peri care uh, on Monday. Okay, remember peri care that we learned? We went down the middle, side, side, skin fold, skin fold. So we're gonna do peri care just like we did peri care. We'll also clean the catheter from where it enters the body 
away. So you want to hold that catheter where it exits the body so that as we're wiping away, as we're cleaning that, that tubing, we're not pulling on the inside of the um, body. So if you've got a catheter inside the patient, remember that balloon just kind of keeps it in place. If you've got that catheter, it will, you know, it, it will deal with a certain amount of tugging, but if you tug too hard, it's going to come out, and that can be very painful because you've got this balloon going through an opening this size, so you're going to end up with tearing and, and bleeding and pain and it's not pleasant. So you don't want to do that. You want to try to hold this in place so that as you're wiping away, this part in here remains stationary. So we're going to hold this where it exits the body and then wipe away. Super important that you're holding it stationary before you wipe it. But that brings up a question, what do we do if it does come out? Now, patients will pull catheters out, especially if your patient is confused or has dementia, or if they're on certain medications that might alter their mental status. Catheters do get pulled out by patients. Um, it's important not to panic. Your patient is not going to die because they pulled a catheter out. It's certainly okay. It's going to hurt. You know, they're going to have some pain. Um, which because that tissue has been torn, right? That balloon is this big going through a hole that big, you're going to have tissue tearing. So that patient, you know, it's going to hurt a little bit, especially if they try to pee through it, right? That's, that's really going to smart a little bit. Um, so what do you do if a catheter gets pulled out? Well, the first thing you do, don't panic because your patient will take their cues from you. Be very calm. Okay, let's just get you cleaned up here. The second thing you do is save the catheter and the bag. Put it, you can put it in a trash bag in the bathroom, that's fine, but don't just throw it away because that nurse has to look at the catheter to figure out what kind of a problem we're dealing with. Now, if I have a patient that their um, catheter got pulled out and you put this whole thing in a bag and I come along and I see the whole thing right? The balloon is still inflated. The tip is still there. It's all intact. That is not a bad problem. I can deal with that. But if you pull this catheter out, right, put it in a bag, and this balloon is broken and a piece of it is missing or the tip of the catheter is not there, that is a much bigger problem because that means that a part of the catheter was left behind in the bladder. We have a foreign object in the bladder. So we have to address that. That's a much bigger problem. The only way that I know what kind of problem I have to work with is to look at the catheter to see what was removed from the patient. Is it just the catheter? Everything is intact? That's okay. Is it the catheter but pieces are missing? That's not okay. I got to call the doctor. We got some work to do here. So when you're uh, working with a patient, if a catheter comes out, don't just throw it away because that nurse needs to inspect it to see what we're working with here. Believe it or not, patients aren't the ones that pull out catheters the most, though. It's actually CNAs. We pull out catheters at a rapid rate as CNAs, and it's mainly because we don't pay attention. If we're turning a patient over in bed and we lean against the bed with our legs, which is very common, right? Let's say that we're making an occupied bed and we turn the patient over onto their side, but we forget they have a catheter and our leg is trapping that catheter tubing against the mattress. So now the catheter can't roll with the patient. You're going to pull that catheter out. Or let's say you're transferring a patient out of bed and into a wheelchair and you forget they have a catheter and it's on the other side of the bed. That catheter is going to get pulled out. Or you don't make sure that the catheter tubing is coiled on the bed. It's actually draped down in a loop near the floor. And as you walk by, your leg gets tangled up in that catheter and you pull it out. There's a lot of ways that CNAs pull catheters out. We pull out way, way, way more catheters than patients do. Don't hide it. That is probably the, the, the biggest thing that I have to get across to you. Do not hide it if your patient's catheter gets pulled out, even if it's your fault. I've seen a lot of CNAs do this. They, they just hide it till the next shift. Well, the patient must have pulled it out. 
Well, think about that from the patient's point of view for just a second, right? They just had a balloon this big come out of a hole that big and it's gonna hurt a little bit. But anytime you have injury, you always have swelling that goes along with injury. So not only is this gonna feel like razor blades when the patient tries to pee, because it's gonna sting a lot. But the problem is that if we get swelling in that area that's too severe, the patient's not gonna be able to pee at all. And if you wait too long and swelling sets in, as a nurse, I can't put another catheter in because there's too much swelling in the area. So now we have to wait two or three days for that swelling to go down before I can even get a catheter in if the patient needs one. So now we've got a much bigger problem on our hands. So if you have a patient that pulls out their catheter or you accidentally pull out the catheter, you need to let the nurse know right away because a nurse only has about 45 minutes to, to decide what they're going to do. Do they put another catheter in? If the patient needs one, we may have to go that route. But if the, if the patient already has swelling, we're not gonna get a catheter in. So that, that solution is now gone. We, we, we can't use that solution. So when you have a catheter that gets dislodged, you've gotta make sure you let the nurse know right away because they only have a certain amount of time to work with. Make sure you save the catheter for them to inspect as well. So any questions on that? Everybody good? All right, so when we're cleaning the catheter, we're going to hold it where it exits the body. We're gonna clean the tubing away from the body and we'll do that four times. So with four different leaves, remember that leaves method we talked about? We're gonna use four different leaves to clean. We'll clean with soap, whatever we wash, we rinse. So we'll rinse with water the same way and then we'll clean the skin around the, the tubing. So we'll go down the center, side, side, skin fold, skin fold, using the leaves method, whatever we wash, we rinse, whatever we rinse, we dry. When you're working with a catheter, the patient will not have a chucks underneath them to start. There's no need. They've got a, a catheter that collects urine. We don't need a chucks there to collect urine because the catheter is doing that job already. You don't want to put a chucks on a bet unless the patient needs one. Chucks are plastic lined. They're going to hold in heat. They're going to make the patient sweat. And now you've got warm, dark, moist in an area where we know bacteria come from. So we don't want chucks on the bed unless we need chucks on the bed. So this skill is gonna start out with a patient with a catheter, no chucks in place. But when we're cleaning, we wanna protect the bed because we don't wanna get it wet. So we'll put a chucks under the patient, clean the tubing, clean the skin, and then take that chucks away. You do not have to clean the backside for catheter care because this patient has a catheter. They're not laying in urine. That's why we had to clean the backside for peri care, was because their buttocks were laying in urine and we had to get that urine, that acidic urine off of the, that skin. Well, this patient, they're not laying in urine so we don't have to clean the buttocks as well. But before somebody asks, what if they had a bowel movement? Well, certainly, if they had a bowel movement, you would clean them up, uh, of course. But this patient, for this skill, for this test, is a mannequin and she has not had a bowel movement. We're just gonna clean the tubing and the skin around it. Remember our whole goal here is to show that we understand the principles. And then we can apply those principles to whatever scenario life may throw at us once we're out there in the real world. Uh, yes, yes, I have a question. Yes. Um, when you mentioned about being careful um, with the bacteria getting into the catheter and the urine bag yes um do you, were you did you mean inside when we empty the bag or outside okay so the next skill that we go over will be emptying the bag i got a whole lecture to give you on that <laughs> okay so what i'm saying right now is um just don't don't separate the two pieces the catheter from the tubing don't separate those that's not what CNAs do, and we've got to keep the outside clean. We're going to talk about the inside being clean in just a few minutes when we talk about emptying that bag. Good question. Okay, so let's take a look at our care plan here. It says provide catheter care to a resident with a catheter. 
Provide catheter care with soap and water to a female resident with an indwelling urinary catheter. Clean catheter tubing and perineal area only. So if you scroll down, you can see that this is kind of a longer skill. It's gonna take somebody with your level of experience about 15 minutes to do. This is a mannequin skill. So none of you will be a patient for this skill. The mannequin will be positioned in bed and charting is not required. We will use the leaves method for cleaning both the catheter and the peri area. You're gonna use that leaves method for both sections of this skill. Okay, so what if there isn't a bag in the restroom to place a catheter that has come out of the patient? What are some other places we could put the catheter? Um, okay, so to, I'm gonna answer that question in two different ways. Um, number one, if there are no bags available, just grab a bath basin and put it in there. Just don't put it directly on the floor. If there's a shower in the bathroom, then you could probably put it in the shower, but I would try to keep it off the floor, you know, put it in something to rest it on the floor. But a more appropriate answer would be in the bottom of trash cans in clinical facilities. It's not like your house at home, like you're, trash can at home, you know, you're probably your kitchen trash can, you only have one bag in there, the one that you're using that you're filling up. But in most clinical settings, if you remove the bag that's in the trash can, so if I grab a trash can and I remove that bag, in the bottom of the trash can are going to be four or five folded up bags that can be used uh, quickly. So that's the best place to get a bag to put the, the catheter and the bag in. Most clinical settings have multiple bags inside the trash can, specifically because trash cans fill very quickly in a clinical setting. Okay, so I hope that, that helps.